Hello everyone, my name is Joni and welcome to Love Qualified. I am a second year physician associate student training in London and this is a PA school application series. Today I'm going to be talking about choosing a PA school to apply to. If you have come to this video thinking that I would actually make a decision for you or tell you which PA school to apply to, I'm afraid you've clicked on the wrong video, but wait, hang on before you go. I am not going to be telling you which PA school to apply to because I think that at the end of the day, that is your decision and you should be making that decision, not me. But what this video is about is just to tell you some things that you should consider before choosing the PA school to apply to. And hopefully that would help you in your application journey. But at the end of the day, the decision lies in your hands. I was scrolling through the Faculty of Physician Associates website Website or the FPA website last night and I found that there are a lot of PA schools in the UK there's about 37 PA schools in the UK which is brilliant it's great that more and more universities are taking up this program and willing to teach and train upcoming PAs this has changed massively over the last decade or so when there are only a couple of unis that actually offered the PA program but it's great because of the fact that when you do apply for PA school you don't go through an external or common standard program like UCAS where it only allows you to put in a couple of number of options this means that you technically can apply to all 37 <laughs> if you meet the requirements because there is no limit obviously um, but then this also poses a big problem which is actually narrowing it down to you know the couple of ones that you would actually apply to it is important that you know or that you're well informed before you make that kind of decision the PA course is very expensive and it is a very intense program so you would want to make sure that you're choosing the right university where you would be able to be well equipped to become a good PA and a good practicing clinician the very first thing that might be important for you to consider is the location now I know a lot of people who live in London um, because of obviously um, expenses that you would incur during the course tend to apply to PA schools that are around London so they can commute from home other people decide to have an experience outside of London so apply to PA schools outside of London but the great thing about it is that the PA schools are, are spread all over the UK you go on the FPA website and you look at the list of all the different universities that offer the PA program you would see that the PA schools are widespread all over the UK so location if it matters to you that might be something that you might want to apply to unis that are closer to you or if you prefer going far away from where you're currently living you know that's something that you might want to consider another important thing that you might want to consider before choosing a PA school is whether this university offers the program as a master's or a PG dip most universities would offer it as an MSc which is a master of science and then some of the universities like St George's offer it as an MPAS which is a master of physician associate studies so with an MSc you do get to write a dissertation and with the MPAS so for example at St George's the dissertation aspect has been scrapped so they've replaced that with a module called investigations in clinical medicine which covers the same credits as you would if you're writing a dissertation but you would just have to write an exam at the end of second year um, to get those credits the last option is the PG dip which is a postgraduate diploma in terms of actually qualifying and getting a job after i don't think whether you go to a university that offers the, the program as a pg dip or an MPAS or a, a msc i don't think that actually matters the only reason why i put this forward as a point to consider is due to funding home students would um, have the opportunity to be given some financial support by the student loans company or the postgraduate loan if you're doing an msc or an mpass but you don't get that same support if you're doing a pg dip so the funding aspect of things might actually might be important for you to consider if you're choosing a PG dip over an MSc or an MPAS. So that is something that you might want to consider. I have made a whole video all about funding in PA school or funding for physician associate students in the UK at the moment and I will leave the video in the cards. 
here or here i don't know <laughs> whichever one it comes up and um you can go and check out and find out more about funding whilst we are on funding um the other thing that you might want to consider is how much the tuition actually costs because at the moment um because Things are in standard for all the universities. Every single PA school is a, is offering or asking for different amounts of tuition fees. So some universities offer, I think, ten thousand um, pounds per year. Some other, and this is for home students, by the way. Some other unis, um, nine thousand nine hundred. Some unis, nine thousand seven hundred. Some unis, ten thousand two hundred. Uh, there's a variation in the tuition fee so this it will be left for you to have a look on their website go to the funding section of the course on the website and just have a look and see how much the tuition fees cost because funding is a very important aspect of the course and you should be able to know and be aware what you're getting yourself into so that you can plan um, how you're going to fund the course that's something that you should uh, consider the next thing that i think would be very important for you to consider before applying to a particular PA school is looking at the course structure. It is important to look at the modules that the PA school offers. So do they um, teach you anatomy and physiology? How do they teach you anatomy and physiology? Do they teach you pharmacology? Now I know that this is something that is um, not entirely tested as a separate um, exam on its own in the national exam but pharmacology should be included in your training because whilst PAs cannot prescribe at the moment we will be able to prescribe in the future and so we should be able to know have a knowledge about drugs and their side effects and you know their mode of action so um, you should be trying to find out if this university is offering a pharmacology module as well I say this because there is a PA that um, someone told me about that they met that um, was really struggling in practice and this PA they said that um, the university that they trained at did not really teach them pharmacology and so they did not know much about the pharmacological aspects of medicine and so they struggled so much that they had to uh, quit and they decided to go to med school and study medicine instead so a lot of universities do tutorials so things like case-based learning or problem-based learning which is where you come together as a group which simulates what you would meet in practice which is the multidisciplinary team and um, you come together and you discuss a case and you go back and research and then you come back and present this case back and present your findings so this is a very important part of self-directed learning I think it's something that most people schools have adapted you want to look at the modules themselves so what exactly are they teaching so foundations in clinical medicine um, investigations in clinical medicine um, evidence-based modules and all of that kind of stuff so you want to look deep into it and what exactly the university is offering now I know that there are some universities that um, started um, the program and then they had to shut it down for a bit and then they have restarted it again for some reason if you are thinking about applying to a university where the course was shut down before, it might be worth considering finding out why the course was shut down in the first place and to see if the issues have been rectified or if it's pretty much the same thing. And one of the things that you can do to help you get an idea of the insides of the course is to speak to current students. Now, I am a PA student. You can speak to me and ask me questions about um, St. George's if you want to know more about the course. I mean, I've been vlogging since last year So I've, I hope that I've given you guys a bit of insights about how the course at St. George at St. George's is run But for other universities as well um, you can contact the PA students and ask them any questions that you have. Be that annoying person that is always asking questions because you need to know, you need to be informed so you can make this decision. The The PA community is very, very warm. Like everyone is very nice. Um, well, most people anyway are very nice. So I'm sure that if you contact people, at least one person would be happy to help you. So you can find PA students on Instagram and here on YouTube as well. The community here on YouTube is growing. So don't be afraid to ask people for help and to just ask them questions about the course and how they're finding it and specific questions if you want to ask them. And yeah, just speak to current students and ask them about their experience. So that would help you decide if you want to um, be part of that or not. Another thing that I think you 
you should consider before applying to PA school is how exactly they are going to be examined. So how the PA school, how the university examines the students. The reason I mention this is because the program should be preparing you for the national exam. Now the national exam is not part, it's not something that the universities offer. It is a standard exam that's taken by PA students after they've already completed their course. It's outside of the university. So students have to register it for it externally. But if the university is not replicating or it's not testing you in the same way that you're going to be tested in national exams, then they're not doing their job to prepare you for this. It is the national exam that will make you a qualified PA, not your university exam. So the national exam consists of two sections. You have the written exams, which consists of SBAs, single best answers. And then you have the OSCE, so the clinical aspect of it, where you have different stations you have 14 stations and then they test you on different things so it could be examinations taking histories doing procedures like cannulations taking bloods it could be um, examining patients or taking a history and coming up with a management plan or it could be um, examining uh, interpreting x-rays or ECGs or carrying out phone conversations and just things like that so those are the kind of things that they should be your university should be testing you on it, it would be great if the university follows the format and that would be the, a good way to prepare you for the nationals so that when you get to the nationals you're not going to be um, taken aback. I know of a PA um, who is someone who is a current PA who said that her university did not do much to prepare her for the nationals and because she was so unprepared she actually failed um, the first attempt and so she had to um, take a course and she's doing it and she did it again and whilst we're talking about national exams one thing that you should um, maybe ask or try and find out is how many people pass the national exams you know you can ask you can ask the at the admin team themselves so go to open days go to university open days ask them you know, if they've been running the course for a couple of years, ask them how many people have passed your national exams. That would give them, that would give you an idea of how well they're preparing the students for the national exam. So don't be scared to ask them these questions, okay? You need to know because you need to make a decision. So ask these questions. Another thing that you might want to consider is the university's placement structure. For some universities, you have both primary care and secondary care placements in first year and then you do the rest of it in second year. Some universities like my university, St. George's, they do only primary care placements in first year and then all your secondary care placements in second year. You want to ask if you're getting the full experience. So the um, core placements, the core specialties that you should be getting experience in, so things like general practice, uh, pediatrics, care of the elderly, obstetrics and gynecology, mental health, um, general medicine or a AMU, general surgery and emergency medicine as well so you want to make sure that you are getting this well-rounded experience. I know a PA student who struggled a lot in her first year because the university could not get the GP surgeries around the area to agree to get the PA students to have placement at the GP surgeries because they weren't very made aware of what the PA role is so they didn't understand what PAs were and so they weren't very receptive to it and so they refused to offer placement opportunities to the PA students and so they spent the whole of their first year on cert they didn't have any experience in general practice and they were very unsure about whether or not they were going to actually get experience in second year and so that is something that you should be aware of because it does happen especially if you're going somewhere where the cohort is quite small um, you need to have an idea of these placement opportunities and if you're getting the full experience and then after you've checked out all of these different things the one thing in fact this, is, this should have come at the very beginning really is to check that you actually meet the university's entry requirement. So you want to look at the course page on the university's website and you want to go to the entry requirements and make sure that you actually fit the entry requirements. If you're just applying randomly to universities without looking for what they want, then they might just reject you in the first day. I think most universities require you to have gotten at least a 2-2 in your previous degree. So you want to look that you meet those requirements and also check um, that you meet the work experience requirements. So it might vary slightly within different different university.
for me personally, the reason why I applied to St. George's University, it was the only university I applied to at the time, actually. I had just finished my biomedical science degree last year in uh, June, and um, I was thinking about which PA school to apply to. The main reason why I applied to George's is because I'm very familiar with the system, I knew how it worked, and I had been to the open days quite a few times, so I had gathered more research and I knew a lot about the course. Also, I had a lot of friends who were who were studying the program at the time one of my friends who I went to college with <laughs> or was actually she moved from where we went to college she moved from my hometown to London to study the course and so I you know was watching her journey asking her questions about the course how she was being examined and about placement and all of that and she was just you know very enthusiastic about it all it was following her journey that actually inspired me to share my own journey on YouTube. I know it might seem that is a lot for you to consider, but you know, I think if you do your research and you're well informed before you make a decision, you're not going to regret it later. The difference in the standards of teaching and the difference in the standards of the things that the universities offer at the moment is I think one of the main reasons, or if not the only reason, is because the PA um, program is not currently regulated. So unlike medicine, where a lot of medical schools you know, are regulated by the GMC, so if they don't provide the same standards of teaching for their med students, then you know the programs are going to be shut down. Hopefully when we are regulated um, in you know a couple of years' time, they would be able to standardise the programs in the different universities and make sure that all the programs that are running are providing the students with all the necessary things that they need to pass the national exam and also to be competent physician associates when they qualify. If you want more information about the PA role or about the national exam or about all the different universities that offer the PA program, I would advise you to go and check out the Faculty of Physician Associates website or the FPA website or the programs are on there and you can have a look individually and read into the different programs and find out the information for yourself and um, I just wanted to remind you guys that I'm, I'm not vlogging as much this year so in terms of day-to-day -day or weekly vlogs but I did vlog a lot in my first year of university I will leave my PA school vlogs playlist down below so if you want to watch all my um, vlogs from last year how I went through like my exams and um, my lecture notes and um, placement GP placement and all of that I will leave that down below all the videos are there and you can check them out if you have any more questions about um, anything I've said in this video or you have any more suggestions for future videos to cover for the application series then um, let me know down in the comments below so yeah thank you guys so much for watching today I'm not actually at placement so um, we have a revision day today or study day today so I am going to university now we have an intellectual disabilities workshop this morning i think and then in the afternoon we have a revision day and i think we're going to be going through the respiratory system and then i'm back i'm back at placement tomorrow this week is my last week of obs and gynae, so yeah thank you guys so much for watching have a lovely day and god bless bye also in the name of jesus It's a wonderful something. I'm just saying thank you. Lord. I'm free. I've got my freedom. Praise the Lord.